Hey, what's going on, y'all? So in this video, I am going to be showing you how to render a metahuman in path tracing. Now, path tracing, just a disclaimer, is still in beta early phases, so it's not going to work 100% of the time. So just to kind of let you know, there's a lot of limitations when it comes to path tracing, but I've been doing path tracing in NVIDIA Omniverse, so I went ahead and start messing around with it in Unreal as well. Now, with that being said, again, just a disclaimer, uh, I am not going to be responsible for your hardware. I'm not sure if your hardware is going to be good enough or fast enough for this. But if you want to try, you can go ahead and follow along to see if, you know, you can get some pretty good results with a MetaHuman and path tracing using Unreal Engine 5. So I do have a MetaHuman right here that I just downloaded. She's actually EV from my MetaHuman short film that I made, I think, 10 months ago or something like that. She's going to be right here. She's a standard MetaHuman. And what I'll do is I'll just grab a light right here. So we can kind of get some light on her just a little bit. And if you haven't seen the short film, go ahead and check it out. It's pretty cool. I'll put it on the top right corner of this video right here. And then the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and make sure all of our settings are good to go as far as path tracing go. So go ahead and edit, project settings, and go ahead and change your rendering interface. So type in RHI. Make sure that it's in direct X12. If it's in 11 or Vulkan or any other ones, it's not going to work. Make sure that's good. And then go ahead and turn on ray tracing. So you can see right here, support hardware ray tracing. And then additionally, make sure path tracing is turned on in here as well. Now, the hardware ray tracing up here, you don't need because we are not going to be using Lumen to make this work. All right, so after that, all you have to do now is close this browser right here. You might have to restart in compile shaders like always in Unreal. And I'll press G here to just kind of hide all of our icons. And as you can see, she's looking pretty good, but this is only regular ray tracing. And after you restart your project, if you now go to lit, you're now going to see this path tracing like I've showed Joe a couple of months ago. And right away, you're going to notice that her eyes are kind of like dark. She looks like she's a demon or something like that. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'll flip it over to lit and I'll just click her right here, her BP, and I'll go to her face and I'll just double click her skeletal mesh right here. And then I'll go ahead and make sure that the eye occlusion is not rendering ray tracing. So if I go to LOD zero right here, I'll go to sections. And if I go to occlusion, I can go ahead and uncheck this. It's gonna compile some shaders real quick. And then I will go ahead and save this once this is over. So now if I go to lit path tracing, you're gonna see that her eyes aren't completely black anymore. But again, here's one of the limitation with path tracing. You'll notice that her hair really drastically changes, which I'm sure you can kind of mess around in materials to get that corrected. And additionally, you'll see that her eyeballs are just completely white, just pure white, which really doesn't look good. And again, just some of the limitations that you kind of have to, it's not going to work 100% with just one click. You're going to have to tweak this a little bit for you to get it to work properly. Go ahead and go to lit mode again. And if I go to post process volume right here and scroll down, we can actually make sure that path tracing is enabled here as well. You can turn off the denoiser if you want to, but I have it on by default. So if I go back again to path tracing, that's what we're kind of uh, using right now. Obviously more bounces, the better it's going to be in more samples per pixel, the better it's going to be similar to NVIDIA Omniverse again. If I go ahead and render this, right? So I'm going to use the MRQ right now to render the sequence. I'll go ahead and create a new one, add level sequence, and let's just do trace for now, just a regular one. And just to be prepared for a crash, I'll go ahead and save it. We'll go ahead and add Vivian or EV into our sequence right here. And I'll go ahead and create a camera. Go to the outliner right here. I'm not sure why that's like that by default. That's kind of annoying. So I'll go ahead and click on outliner right here. And let's go to that camera now. Go to the details. And basically, we're just going to get that eye in focus. And let me go ahead and turn down our rec light just a little bit because it is a little bit too much. Maybe like cut it in half. Uh, maybe one, maybe two. All right, two is good. And as you can see, it's starting to resolve. You can see her fuzz right here, which honestly, I don't like fuzz too much. I usually turn that off. But as you can see right here, it's look, looking pretty good. And with path tracing, it's a progressive renderer. That means if you want path tracing in the editor, you have to leave it still. And once I move it, it's going to go ahead and resolve it again, as you can see right here. Now, eventually, one day, I'm hoping that Unreal Engine 5 would have multiple GPU support like NVIDIA Omniverse does because I tried path tracing in NVIDIA Omniverse and actually made a video about it with four RTX A6000 totaling 92 gigs of VRAM. And you can almost 
do path tracing real time in there. Now, NVIDIA Omniverse supports multi-GPU. You can have as many as you want, as much as you can afford. And that is the reason why I'm over there a lot more than I am in Unreal Engine 5 now. And just so you saw that while I'm talking, the quality is starting to really get really good. Obviously, the eyes, again, you know, it's not working 100%, like I said. So with that being said, let's go ahead and render this out then. I'll go to Movie Render Queue right here. Now, if that's not enabled for you, let's go ahead and go right here, Cinematics, Movie Render Queue. If it's not enabled, go to the Plugins and go ahead and Edit, Plugins, and make sure that that is on as well. Render Queue. All right, so make sure that that's turned on. And again, this method right here, again, it's not in the documentations, but I just, you know, I just play around in here like usual. So if you know a better method than doing this, just let me know in the comments below to kind of help everybody out. So we'll go ahead and render and trace because of the level sequence is named trace. I'll go to unsave config right now and I'll swap and I'll swap this over to uh, PNG because I like working in PNG better. That's just me. So I'll go to output right now and I'll just select the folder. Path test is okay. Select one. Uh, 1920 is okay, and we'll just render out maybe 12 frames, just the way it is right now. Now we're gonna go to settings, and we're gonna add path tracer, and I'm just gonna leave that by default again. So I'll go ahead and accept this right now, and then render. Actually, let me save it first, and then render. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this out right now. This is asking about render passes. I'm not rendering any render passes or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and go to that folder. So now that I have this folder, where you can see, uh, you're gonna see final image, uh, sometimes when people look at this, you're like, whoa, that looks good. That is actually not your path traced image. So if you scroll down, you're going to get path tracer right here. So if I go to click on this right here, you're going to see you're like, what in the heck? That looks a lot worse than just a regular ray tracing. Well, that's because we didn't actually set up any samples per pixel in the actual render itself. Now, again, not sure if this is how it's supposed to work, but basically what happens is in the post-process volume, and if I scroll down right here and go to that path tracing, this looks really good because we're actually resolving as with this right now. But the problem is, as far as I know, this only works for the editor. So whenever you actually render out, this is not being applied. So pretty much what I had to do was go back to this config right here, go ahead and go to settings and then add anti-aliasing. I know it doesn't make any sense, but just follow this, all right? So now if I go to anti-aliasing and if I go like say 100 right here and I'll leave the temporal sample count so there's not really motion blur right now because she's still, so I'll leave that as is so you don't have to wait forever. I'm gonna go ahead and override this and say none. And now if I go ahead and go back to my path test and I will turn on AA for anti-aliasing turned on and I'll render the same exact frames now. Press accept and now if I run the local, Okay, so sponsor time real quick. If you haven't done so, go ahead and check out the How to Make a Movie in Unreal Engine 5 Beginner's Edition course that I have in Gumroad and ArtStation. You absolutely do not need a motion capture suit to follow this along because I actually provide the mocap files for you. Okay, so I went ahead and stopped the render and I pretty much exported just one frame. So let's go back to the folder now. We'll go to the zero path tracer file right here. This is what we're going to be comparing before we did the anti-aliasing feature. And now I'm going to open up the actual path trace one right here, zero, zero, with the anti-aliasing turned on. And as you can see, the difference is pretty clear. We have 100 samples right here versus pretty much zero samples right here. So with that being said, when I talked about NVIDIA Omniverse, like, so I was like, when I was trying to figure this out, like it doesn't make sense how this is rendering, it's not picking it up. Well, in NVIDIA Omniverse, it works the same way. So if I go to the render settings right here and I change this to path tracing now, you can actually change the viewport resolving as far as path tracing goes. So this is the same exact way, max bounces, but this only affects the editor. For me to actually rendered samples per pixel in here, I would go to the actual renderer, the movie capture, which is right here. And if I change this now to path tracing, and then you're gonna see that there's this path trace samples per pixel. So in Unreal Engine 5, when I was trying to figure out how to render path tracing, I just had to look for this in UE5. So we have the viewport path tracing and we have the sample per pixel right here for the actual render. 
So I think that's how it works. But then again, like I said, there's really not much documentation about this path tracing because honestly, I don't think it's ready yet. But hopefully one day it will be and hopefully one day it will support multiple GPUs. All right. So with that being said, if you want to go ahead and change the material for the eyes, it's pretty easy. You can just go back to that blueprint and just mess around with the material. So if I go right here, click on the left shader. You can pretty much just tweak this. Now, unfortunately, you are going to have to have this open, both of them at the same time while you're tweaking. Uh, for the eye whites, you can mess around with the sclera settings, but that's for another tutorial if y'all want to do that. I'm still trying to find a sweet spot, to be honest. So if you have any tips on how to make that happen, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I hope y'all learned something new today. If you like this video, go ahead and like it and subscribe. I'm trying to get 100,000 subscribers this year, so please do help me out.